Welcome. This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his Spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever even imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply, gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah in Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennial, oh yes. These are the words that come from the message uh, uh, writings of the scripture that I believe expose some things that we might not gather as we read from the international version. And with this in mind that uh, in these uh, passages of scripture uh, written in uh, different forms but with the same meanings. It is my hope today that we will recognize the importance of the power in the inner being that all of us as believers in Jesus Christ ought to seek 
for our living each day. Notice I've said power in the inner being. I'm not so concerned about advising us about our out, outer wares, but rather what is on the inside of us. For in context, what is inside is going to show on the outside. No matter how you try to keep it from doing it, what is inside finally finds its way out. The apostle is opening up a fact that we need to look at. And that is that they then and we now have placed too much on what we do and not enough on what God has given to us of his love that says to us openly that whatever he wishes will take place. Yeah. If I put it another way, Paul wants us to understand that there is the availability of the information of what God is doing and the powers that he can give and wants us to have, that that availability is available through the administration of his love. Now, what is the administration of his love? It is simply doing as God would do based on his love for mankind. Everybody's talking about, I don't know what he wants me to do. I can tell you. He wants you to love as he loves. That's what God wants you to do. He don't want you going around looking for some special something. He just wants you to live within the context of his love. And anyone who reads the epistle recognizes that the apostle Paul wants to pass along to others the information that it took him a long time to gather and to learn about himself. And that is that if he is willing to suffer as Jesus Christ has suffered, then he has the capacity to do it through the love that Jesus Christ has given to him. Now you can't live the life that the Lord wants you to live unless you know what that life is. That life is more than jumping and shouting. The jumping and shouting takes place after you've lived the life. That's, that's when that takes place. When you have gone and been what you profess to be. When you have loved your neighbor as yourself. when you have forgiven your enemy, when you have taken a slap in the face that you feel you did not deserve. When you have been able to look your, your fault in the face and defeat it. When you've been able to rise up above the weakness that has hampered you for years. When you can finally say, the Lord has brought me through. 
that his grace is indeed sufficient for me. But the only way to receive that is to is to also act out the spirit that was in the Apostle Paul who says this is all unmerited. He didn't have to do this for me. He could have destroyed me. I was seeking to destroy him. He didn't have to give me a life that is filled with abundance, with strengths that I could not even imagine. He didn't have to do that for me. He could have done for me as I do for a fly. Swatting. But he, he gave me this ministration. He gave you this ministration. He gave all that you have received from him all of his riches because he wanted to make you stewards of that. He wanted to place in your hands the stewardship, the trust, the commitment to bring about in this world where we live the experience of true family. That's why the epistle of Ephesians talks about the unity of the church. And then goes on to talk about what that unity is when there is unity in the church. Unity is not about getting what you want. Unity is about laying down what you do want. And not having it. Not being able to boast about it. That's how the unity comes about. I was listening the other day uh, to one of the commentaries on a religious station. And they were talking about marriage. And they said that in order to have a good marriage, it is not all about the things we have, but what we give up. And while he was talking, I went back again over 57 years. And I began to look in the glass of the wedded persons that make up that 57 years. And I thought of all of the things that we were when we started about ourselves. And then I looked at what we are now about each other. The church is a family. And it's not all about what you want. It's about what God's will is. And what we are willing to give up in order to experience that will as the family of God. God has already done it. God has already given it up. 
God has already made it possible. You, what, what ministration was that? That was the ministration of Jesus Christ. God gave up his only son that he might come to the earth. And in coming to the earth would not be about himself, would not be about his own glory, would not be about taking for himself, but would be there for everybody in the world. For everybody who would believe on him, he would give them their needs and, and satisfy those needs that they had. It's a mystery. We treated God so bad, yet he treats us so good. His love is a mystery. We fought him so hard. We are still fighting him hard, and yet he is still giving us his love, his care, his concern. And every millisecond, a blessing for every breath you take is one that comes from God. Got too far to go. Let me let me let me begin to cut off here. Paul brings to our understanding, if we accept it, that we don't have to have any fear in approaching God. I bow down my knees. And when I bow on my knees, I know already how I'm going to come out. I don't have to fear talking to God about what I need. I don't have to fear talking about God, what's wrong, about what's wrong with me. Because I know God is my father, and my father is not going to turn me away. I may not understand what he's doing for me and how he's doing for it for me, but I know that he is my father, and that my father loves me, and that my father will not let me fail. My father will not take away from me. My father will give to me. I may fear my next door neighbor, but I don't have to fear God. I may fear the judge in the court, but I don't have to fear God. I may be uneasy with my physical boss, the one here on earth, but I don't have to be uneasy with God. I know what God's response is going to be. When I bow my knees, when I get out on my knees, open my mouth and talk to him. And sometimes I'm on my knees and all with my mouth open like a bird. Because I know he's going to feed me. Wherever he is, he's getting something for my good. He's getting something to make my life better than what it was. But our problem today, if I can take three or four more minutes, our problem today is that in order to have the good, we are not willing to endure the pain. We don't want to give up the time. We don't want to make the effort. We say we believe, but Faith demonstrates our belief. Amen. 
for faith brings about obedience to what we say we believe. And through it, we work for that which we have faith in that we believe in. And all you're saying, preacher, is that if you believe in God, you have faith in God. And if you have faith in God, you'll commit to God's way. The other things will not become more important than God. For you can see God's love as total. I couldn't tell you for the life of me what happened to me in those hours between 11 o'clock last night and 5.30 this morning. I dare anybody to get up and tell me. <laughs> I can't tell you. All I know is, and I don't even know the moment. I remember one thing. My wife coming into the bedroom saying, you need to take your medicine and take your glasses off. And from that time on, I couldn't tell you a single thing. I was unconscious. Unconscious, totally unconscious. But about 5.30 this morning, something that I can't describe woke me up. I had a sound mind. I was able to tell you my name. I was able to get up and run to the bathroom. I knew to brush my teeth. I knew to take my shower. I knew what my goal was for 8 o'clock this morning. And so I got myself prepared and dressed and drove in safety to 575 Getty Street. It wasn't something that Charles did. It was what God did. What's that song we used to say? He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Paul is saying, he did all of that for me so that I could have the administration of his word. That's what I've been doing for the last 35, 40 minutes. The administration of his word. From this epistle to the Ephesians. And my stewardship has been to tell you that God loves you so much that it doesn't matter what you've been doing. It matters that he loves you. And because his love is so unsearchable, he will give every bit of it to you that you need. So you can live a life that exposes the abundance of who he is. 
that he is God. And beside him, there is no other God. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. And because I know who holds tomorrow, I'm all right. Can you say that? If you can, then you're willing to endure the pain the fear of a street with young men on it with pistols who shoot wildly. A movie theater where someone will walk in that knows nobody there and destroy them physically. A court that will make laws against God I can stand it because he said he's going to correct it all. And so I love them all because they're in God's hand and God is going to correct it. And it's all right with me because he has already told me in his word that it's going to get worse before it gets better. And that it's all about making a new world where his family will come together and live eternally with him. And he has done it because Jesus Christ gave his life on Calvary's cross, was buried in a bar borrowed tomb stayed there for three days, but then got up and its history out of the grave and declared that all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. And he has said, I'm coming back again to receive you and me unto himself. I believe it. I've committed to it. I have faith in him. And so I live now for that moment when I will be perfected through Jesus Christ and I will live with God forever who will not live with sin.